guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, hello. Today, Mick. Have a guess. We're talking about <laughs> EQ. Okay, so we've been asked for this a lot. People mm. talking about EQ in general, EQ and how it relates to different distortion sounds, and of course, it's fundamentally important. Very important. And surprisingly misunderstood. Is this the point where we say there are no answers? I would say, of, of course there are no answers. There are an incredible a lot of suggestions and possible uses mm. for the EQ. But first of all, uh, let's just run through what we're going to be using today. Um, I've got the, the Marshall and the Lazy J both running together for reasons which shall become apparent a little bit later <coughs> on. We keep calling this a Marshall. It's not a Marshall, it's the Mallard. Um, it's, an, it's, it's the 18 watt plexi. Yeah, it's a clone. It's a clone, it's a Marshall clone. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I mean my Marshall. But yeah, it's the Marshall clone. 18 watt plexi and the uh, 20 watt Lazy J, which is a Tweed Deluxe type thing. Yep. So, you know, Marshall style, Tweed Deluxe style, running together. And the overdrive pedal we're using today is the Jester from Ooh. Kingsley. I know, dude, check it out, man. I mean, that's the clean sound. That sounds mega. Sorry. I remember the first time I met you, probably uh, about 10 years ago now, maybe mm -hmm. just slightly longer, you were fizzing about the original King's yes. Jester. Yes. Which had a couple of 12AX7s poking up through the top, as it I did. remember. It did. Uh, wonderful sounding <clears throat> pedal, uh, massive sounding thing, and it was huge. Uh, it was AC powered and a bit of a pain. This is same design, still has two 12x7s in the pedal itself. Right. But it's DC powered, so you know can run it off a um, we'll run it off our supply. But yeah. yes, it's a lot easier to power, and it's small and well small enough to put on your board. What voltage does it run at? It runs at 12 volts DC. Oh. Uh, and it takes what about a, half an amp. What about the tubes? You know what the tubes run at? The 12 ax 7s Well, uh, what voltage did the tubes yeah. run at? They're still there's a high volts. Yeah. They're running at you know hundreds of volts DC. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a, a proper tube. It's pedal. a proper. It's not one of the pretend tube valves that have yep. LEDs glowing underneath them to make you think that it's on. Yeah. It's a proper. Yeah. I mean uh, Simon Kingsley. Sorry, Simon Jarrett at Kingsley Pedals. The guy is a bit of a genius. He is an amazing guitar player. So Another one. No, well, he started at Berkeley. I know he. Um, I saw him on his demos on his channel, and I thought, oh man, he sounds amazing. And I've got to meet him, and I, because uh, he lives in LA, but he's an Englishman. Right. And he came over here, and I said, dude, I just want to come over and get a lesson from you. <laughs> and I did. He's Berkeley trained, and he's just, you know, beautiful, um, beautiful guitar player. So, and I, I like dealing with companies where you listen to the guys play, and it's like, he knows what he's talking about, you know. It just for, for me. Yeah, yeah, it works. It, you know, it, it, it does work. And he. Uh, so anyway. All right. Without further ado, let's do a thirty-second demo of the Kingsley, the new Kingsley Jester. Okay. You play, I'll tweak. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it great? That's good. It's really, really good. Really, really good. Like, like that a lot. Yeah. Like that a lot. Okay, so we wanted to uh, use the Jester today because it's a very natural sounding um, overdrive pedal. And we're going to use the equalizer. Okay. The first of all, we're going to use it after the pedal. Yep. Okay, to show you what it's like having EQ control 
after a gain stage. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, I mean, this is the Boss G7 that everybody uses. Everyone uses it. This is, yeah. Standard, nothing. It's, it's an old one. Yeah. Beaten up. Frequency range goes from 100 hertz to 6.4 kilohertz. Exactly. There we are. There we go. So, uh, shall we talk about key guitar frequencies, Mick? We can try. Um, I'll, I'll bring in the, um, the Mesa Boogie V, well, the Mesa Boogie five band graphic, mm -hmm. because I can't remember seeing a, a graphic equalizer on a guitar amp before that. No. In any case, Boogie popularized the use of a graphic EQ on uh, a guitar amp in addition to the, the tone controls. And of course, mm -hmm. tone controls, as we know, just boost or cut uh, groups of frequencies. Boogie made it look like a five band graphic and those frequencies were, I had to write them down because I can't remember, I owned enough boogies in my time, but um, those frequencies were 80 hertz, mm -hmm. which is essentially... L thud. Yeah, thud. Uh, 240, mm -hmm. which is what, low mids? Low mids, yep. 750? Uh, it's sort of mids, mids. But not, not kind of, you would I'm think of mid range as like one to one, two, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, upper low mids. Upper shall low we mids. Say. Uh, two point two k, which is upper upper mids. Yeah, and six point six, which is hair, isn't it? Really. Mm. Hmm. So that would that you know on the old boogie amps they were very famous. You saw me do it in the intro there for having the V shape. Yeah. Scoop all the mids out, push the bass and uh, treble, and that's what gives you a very eighties type metal guitar sound, just like this. <laughs> All right, uh, so that just, just, that's what happens when you scoop all the mids out of a... a Exercise the demon. <laughs> of, a, of a sound. Um, First of all, let me just say, it's huge and it's such an easy sound to play. There's none of that mid-range frequency, you know, we're interacting with the guitar, yeah. so it's just so easy to play. The issue with that, immediately you put that in a band context, is that to be heard, over the wash of cymbals and snare drums and every, all the other frequencies that are going on the stage, you have to be so loud. Yeah, and as we heard again right at the beginning, when we went from that kind of the V shape to the inverted V with the, the middle frequencies boosted, mm -hmm. how Just, much louder did it sound? Exactly. Right, because different frequencies work, hit your ears at different level, or they hit your ears at the same level, but your brain perceives them at different levels, mm -hmm. right? Let's um, tell you what, let's just whip through the, uh, the G7 there a sec and I'll just do each of the frequencies. Okay. Just to, yeah, go on then. about that is that when we went back to the flat setting it sounded scooped right okay because because we'd gone from that kind of real super humpy mid now Brian May is someone you would think about with a very pronounced mid-range in that respect yes but I think um, his tone is a lot more complex yeah then then but the thing is everyone classes him in the mid and he does have that mid-range boost, primarily because he uses so many AC30s mm. that they shelve the bottom end. Um, but you know he's he's used a lot of different things you know, in his time, mm. and 
his his tone is 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 complex, you know. But that kind of, you know, if you think of something like um, some of the more vocally sounding solos, Absolute, where they're very kind yes, of enveloped, aren't they? Of course, of and course. That's, and that's that's that, that's that mid range thing that yeah. he's you know he's really well known for. The treble booster. We're yeah. talking about the treble boosters shelving those bottom end frequencies and really pushing yeah. those, those those mids. Um, you know, it is an amazing sound. The beautiful thing about that sort of sound is it just cuts through and it will sit on top of even the most dense mix. Yeah. It'll just sit there. What's really interesting straight off the bat is mm -hmm. that with a an EQ placed in a quite a prominent position after the overdrive, all of a sudden your overdrive turns into ten different overdrives because it can completely change the character of the of the distortion and, and the envelope. Yes. So if you've got a pedal that you just wish had a bit more mid-range or was a bit less trebly or whatever, mm -hmm. A, buy another pedal, B, um, try an EQ, just specifically to help the gain texture of your of your sound. Yeah. And certainly to punch out in solos and stuff. It, the solo punching thing mm. is a wonderful use for an EQ pedal. Uh, now, you can either use it after or before, and we'll, we'll do some demonstrations of that in a minute, but the having the ability to voice it a tad differently, just show off a little bit of the bottom end, maybe just punch the lower mids a little bit higher, mm. just to give it a little bit more clarity, mm. and of course, boosting. Mm. So with the EQ pedal after your overdrive pedal, um, it's the same thing as when we did gain structure, okay? Um, when we had uh, an amplifier after the overdrive section, it acted as a master volume. That master increased, it took the entire sound and increased it. If you put the EQ pedal after your overdrive pedal, it'll take all of those frequencies and it will simply give them a boost or yeah. a cut. Whereas if you put the EQ pedal into the overdrive pedal, if we push those mid-range frequencies, they will compress. Yeah, those are the ones that drive more. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you were just talking about using a um, equalizer as a solo boost. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've done is I've set the equalizer at a very accentuated. In fact, I'm going to accentuate it just a bit more. Okay. Version of what you were just talking about. So we're not uh, for, we're not for one second saying this is a nice sound. Right. Just just to cover that off, but we are going to show you what happens when you go from a flat EQ mm -hmm. with a distortion sound mm -hmm. to the, uh, the when, with the EQ off and on and you'll be able to hear very clearly when it's off and when it's on. Okay. Give so, me some love. So you can hear with it on, there's no way anyone's getting away from that. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that a few postcodes over have just gone, hmm, what's that sound? Yeah, you so know. again, we're not, at no point are we saying that's a good sound. No. It's certainly a usable sound. But if you, if for example, you're playing, I don't know, and you've, you've got your amp and you've got that really nice kind of distortion sound and when you step on your booster, it doesn't really get any louder and you're trying to, you're struggling to cut through the drums, a little bit of mid-frequency EQ, roll off the bass. Yes. That's... And rolling off the bass is important because what will happen is if you don't cut off a little bit of bottom end, the amp will compress a lot earlier on, okay? The speakers have to work harder, the power section has to work harder. Um, the energy it takes to amplify low end frequencies mm. is a lot more than it takes to, you know, mid and high range frequencies. That's something that, that I mean, I guess we've always known, but we really found out just recently, we were uh, messing around with Victory Amp's new Kraken, which oh, is the new amp uh, aimed at um, Alternative and the Gent guys and all that. And you, your assumption is with those heavy gain sounds that it's all about bottom end, mm. but it's actually not because so the guitar's not. putting out so much bottom end anyway, mm -hmm. you can afford to lose some of it in the amp, which means the amp's more efficient and grindier and all the rest of it. Yeah. That was a real revelation to me. Right. Um, 
And I think the point of mentioning that is quite often you'll be playing there and you'll think, oh, this doesn't sound very full, what I need is more bass. And you turn up the bass and your amp flabs more and it doesn't, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So we're saying solos, heavy overdrive, just try rolling off that bass a little bit. Absolutely, very, you know, very important. I mean, we've talked about mid-range a lot, mm. but you know, we also need to talk about the bottom end and how just, just be aware of it and just be careful of it. You know, it, there's a lot of high-powered, like especially these the big rock amplifiers, that the bottom end is just unreal. Mm. You know, and then the bass player, may, you know, a lot of the time is just not there because mm. the guitar there's so much bottom Every end in there. there is, of course. <laughs> Very good, very good. So, you know, I like, you know, the mixes where you hear the guitars in their, you know, mid-range frequency and a little bit of bottom end and, the, you know, bright enough, but mm. you can still hear. It leaves space for the other instruments. Yeah. That's one thing I've learnt from the, um, the Carnival. I'm talking to John Stockman from Carnival and how aware they are of each other's frequencies. And you hear those guys, whether it's on the album or whether it's a live mix, and they just sound incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Because they're, they're all aware of where they are in the, in the frequency, in the, in, the, you know, in the mix. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just, you know, one thing to be aware of. So why is a graphic equaliser more effective at that job? Well, because your overdrive pedal's bass control or your amp's bass control covers a frequency range that's that wide, mm -hmm. right? So when, is this, this is correct, so when you start rolling it off, it starts tailing off in a big way. Yes. Whereas if you've got an equaliser pedal, you can select a much narrower band of frequencies. Absolutely. So if you decide that the frequencies around 200 hertz are clashing badly with the bass player, mm -hmm. or 100 hertz is clashing really badly with the bass drum, mm -hmm you get to just cut those frequencies or indeed boost them higher up the, up the range. Actually, this is, this is interesting because another great use for the equaliser pedal, and, and again, John Stockman from Carnival, and I don't know why I'd never thought of this before, but he has a G7 at the very end of his pedal board before it goes to his amplifiers. Ah, uh, I know right? it's coming. And he tunes the room. Yeah, of course. So. Now I first experienced this when I was doing lots of cover gigs and I would go to, you know, go to a venue, I'd have my rig and it would all sound amazing and I'd do this one stage and it would sound great. The next venue, same rig, same guitars, everything. And it was, something was wrong. It just sounded, it just didn't have the life that it had before. And it got to a point where I had different amplifiers that I knew would work in different <laughs> venues, right? <laughs> It was, uh, it was so strange. And it was what was actually happening physically in the room. So having a graphic equaliser at the end of everything, just to be able to tune to the room mm. is great. But the other thing I wanted to show you as well... Well, just to finish that off, I okay. mean, that's what PAs have, isn't it? Exactly. A PA has got a massive, like, five trillion, billion, zillion band graphic there in the rack, and mm -hmm. that's the first thing they do. They tune, you know, that's why... you when you hear a rig being set up, that's why you hear screaming feedback because they're finding out where it works yes. and they're finding out where the resonances are and they're removing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just being able to, and you're not talking about taking out massive mm. frequencies, you're talking about, okay, there's a, uh, where my amplifier is, there's a bass trap there, I'm just gonna pitch that at the moment. Um, or this room is so dead, mm. I've gotta add a little bit more bite and something, you know, that might not be readily available on the amplifier. You know, just just a little bit of, you yeah. know, that 6K, just a little bit more, you know. Great use for it. Mm. So that's, that's equalizers in sort of global terms then. We know mm -hmm. that they affect o the overall EQ of your sound. That yes. sounds obvious enough, but yeah. sometimes it's not until you hear it that you really realize it. Look, I'm gonna show you one example, actually. So the Lazy J, it's a very pronounced mid-range, okay? And it's lovely. But with an EQ pedal, it gives you the opportunity to maybe just take a little bit of those mids out. Turn it into a blackface fender oh, rather maybe than a, a tweet. So let's, let's have a go. <laughs> so again, you can kick the EQ on with number 12. So...
So now if we do that with the with the overdrive pedal in, so now this is just the lazy J, okay? Now you would never in a million years say that that was a Tweed Deluxe amplifier with that EQ kicked in. No, 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 well, it's, I mean, let's, let's just do it again and, and go silly as we did at the beginning. I mean, it's a very different thing, isn't it? So just the Laser J by itself. Okay, now you hear that bottom end? It started to flub. Yeah. Okay, so let's dial out that bottom end. Nobody, nobody should be really surprised by that because that's what EQ does, but it's not until you hear it, is it, that it, that it goes, oh my god, yeah. I could use that. Yeah, so a very handy thing. Now, I'm going to give you the, the, uh, the floor because I want to hear, like we've done before, we hear the differences in EQ now with the instruments yeah. and how I'm going to have a play now Okay. and see if we can, uh, yeah. So, all right, so here's the uh, Jester by itself. So you hear now that tiny little difference I made then. Obviously, I boosted the output a bit. Yeah. But all I did was I gave 800 hertz just a little kick, and I took down 1.6k. All right. So again, we'll just have a listen to the difference there. So. Beautiful. Okay. That was the bridge pickup, of course. Yep. So, making very small adjustments with the EQ after the overdrive makes a really big difference. Huge difference. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the EQ before the overdrive. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, at the moment it's after loop 8. I'm going to put it after the six. Okay, so again, let's go Jester. So what's going to happen now, the EQ frequencies that I boost are going to hit into the front of the jester and they're going to compress and they're going to compress earlier yeah. than the other frequencies okay so what you're doing really now is tuning the sound of the pedal rather than the whole well, i mean you are going to get an effect of the whole thing but you're actually pushing the pedal into a different absolutely bunch of overdrive territories yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so i'll i'll have a play with the with the frequencies okay and then you'll hear 
as you're playing, that those frequencies will actually compress, as opposed to what we heard before, yeah. it was like a master EQ mix control thing. Yep. What we're going to hear now is the way that the pedal reacts to those frequencies going into the front end. Indeed. Let's rock. Awesome. Is this a Fender Strike? I know. How good does that sound? Yeah. So, we're getting a lot of gain boost as well. Whereas before, we weren't getting a gain boost. We're boosting those frequencies, but the, there's no change in gain. I'm really surprised that it has such a global effect. I was expecting to hear less kind of global effect on the tone and just more flub in the dis I mean there was that there was more effect in the distortion but mm -hmm. had it also had a huge much more effect on the uh, kind of output if you like sure uh, much more effect on the eventual sound as as much as the kind of tone if that makes sense okay yeah really interesting mm. I love using the idea of using the equalizer into yeah you know there are so I mean Dave Gilmore is a really good example sorry David Gilmore. Sorry, David. Davy G. Um, he uses uh, equalizers and boosts on either side of his big muffs. Yeah. And it's, it's such a great way to shape that tone. W what I found, I've got a really old, like the first generation of the um, Love Pedal Eternities. Awesome sounding thing. It's the one that was handmade by Sean. Yeah, you know. yeah. And... Wonderful sounding pedal, and it has the it has this feel that I haven't found in, certain, in these pedals before. You know, it just has a certain feel about it, but the frequencies aren't always right. It's got a, quite a shelved bottom end, very pronounced mid range, but there's something about the feel of it that's just really nice. Mm. So by using that in conjunction with an EQ pedal, I mm. retain the feel of it, but I can actually shape the overall sound. Yeah. Um, you know, because it, you know every transistor has its own way of of overdriving and you know creating distortion, whether using diodes or op amps or whatever. Mm -hmm. They will have a certain feel to the you know to the outcome and the way they interact with the guitar. And if you can find that pedal and then use that in conjunction with an EQ, yeah, you just to get what you need. Absolutely. Interesting what you say about the shelved bottom end because our our friend the Tube Screamer, of course, has been used in countless heavy gain recordings mm -hmm. specifically for that because if you get a, a you know a high output bridge humbucker and you stick that into something like a Mesa Rectifier or a Super Crank Marshall mm -hmm. with everything at significant levelage mm -hmm. you know you need to dime those knobs you've got way too much bottom end so what, what you find you'll find a tube screamer stuck in front of that A for a little bit of extra gain but also just to shelve off that bottom end and that little it's essentially doing the same job. It's in fact, it's pretty much it's doing that. Yeah. Is what it's doing, yeah. isn't it? Almost. Yeah, and it, it, that's why guys use them as solo boosts. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I mean, you know, Stevie Ray didn't have his on all the time. Mm. He had it on when he wanted to give it a little more, more love. Yeah. And perfect. Yeah. I was playing with this artist in Australia. Yeah. And I remember I had an EQ player. Uh, I had an EQ pedal on my board. 
And the bass player looked at me and says, oh, if you, need, if you need one of those things, there's something wrong with your tone. And I thought, and there's quite a few guys actually that, that look at the, uh, the, at the EQ pedal as a band-aid, mm. but it's so not. It's a wonderful tool. Well, lest we get into that, I mean, there's, there are whole legions of guitar players out there who think pedals are cheating, so. Fair enough. Let's, yeah, moving swiftly on. Yeah. So, yeah, they are fantastic things. Um, they're like, I would always have one on my gig bag, mm. should anything happen. Another thing they're really good for, if your amp goes down and you need to go into the mixing desk. Ah, yes. I mean, you know. They, they're, not a, they're not the perfect no, no, no. amp simulator, but they're just very, very handy things to have. Yeah, yeah. So you could use your EQ as a global tone control yep. to um, get things sounding right in a room. Yep. You could use it after your overdrive pedal as a kind of global sound tweaker for a solo boost or something yes, like that. Yes, or, yes. Or a boost even you know, for, for everything, not just for your overdrive pedals. But even for you know for a clean boost, just for any mm. sort of boost, using the EQ pedal as opposed to a straight volume boost. Yeah, actually there we are. I mean, um, the 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 slider all the way on the, on the right hand side there uh, is a volume knob, isn't it? Exactly. So if your if your EQ is flat, mm -hmm. you can boost the gain by what I don't know some amount of dB. Yeah. Whatever it is. Large. Is it large? Large. Like 15, 20 dB, something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's. It's, uh, let's have a go. So it, it's a boost. It's a boost. It's a boost with EQ controls on it. So it's a tunable boost mm -hmm. or a tunable cut. That's a great way to think Actually, of it. Actually, we didn't have to talk about cut because if you're, there's quite a lot of guys out there who don't like using the volume control. Right. So what about if you were, if you liked this sound. <laughs> That, that was your lead sound. Yeah. But you decided, hang on a minute, what I want is I want that quieter, but I don't want to turn my volume down. At the moment, that's going into the pedal. Ah, so you need it the other side. You need the other side. Yeah, yeah. So let me just facilitate that for you, sir. So you retain the same amount of boost. Exactly. So let's try of that course, again. Of course, of course. Yeah, so the girl singer's doing her bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it sounds like this. Who's making all that noise? Yeah, very uh, poorly demonstrated uh, volume cut device. Actually, that's really useful. Very useful. Yeah. So what have we learned? Lots. We've learned that EQ pedals are fantastic. Mm. A very handy thing to have. You can use them as a master EQ gain control for your rig. You can use them as a, in conjunction with a single overdrive pedal or just as a booster. Use them either side of the overdrive pedal for like a gain control frequency going into the, the, into the pedal or a master EQ for the pedal alone, and the volume cut, which is very handy. A booster with EQ. It, That's a great way to think of it. That's what it is, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Really good. Yeah, I know. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, have a fantastic week, and we'll see you on Friday. See you next time. Peace. bye.